Today we'll be traveling on board of an Avanti West Coast train from London, the biggest city and also the capital of England, to Glasgow, what is the biggest city in Scotland. And today we'll be traveling in first class. This doesn't just give you more room, but you also have a lot of extra service. But obviously, I also show you the standard class on board of these trains. So join me on board of this Avanti West Coast intercity service between London, Houston and Glasgow Central. So join me on board of this Avanti West Coast service to Glasgow from London. Well now let's get this video on the track and let's roll the intro. The underground is a great way to travel within London and especially if you're going from it to the main terminal railway stations like London Euston. And this is also exactly what I did. The underground station for the Circle Line, Hammersmith and City Line and the Metropolitan Line is located a little bit at the side and this is about a 3 minute walk. This station is called Euston Square. Although integrated within London Euston Station, you also find an underground station that's being served by the Northern and Victoria Line. Right at the front of London Euston Station, there's a rather busy street. Oh, let me surprise you, it's called Euston Street. This is the same street as where King's Cross and St Pancras, what are two big terminal railway stations, what are not too far away, are also located on. That's about a 5 to 10 minute walk from here, those two terminal stations. Anyway, because of this, at the front of the railway station, there's a rather big bus stop as well. So if you want to get around by bus, you can do this as well. I wouldn't say that London Euston Station is a pretty railway station at all. However, it's quite practical and what I really like about this railway station, especially if the weather is good like when I did this trip, at the front you find the square and at this square you find lots of places where you can have to sit and wait for your train and there are lots of screens over here with information about departing trains. These screens are pretty detailed to be honest. Let's move into the railway station. The entrance to the underground is located at the left from where I'm entering right now. It's not integrated within the main concourse directly. And this is a terminal station, therefore the layout is pretty simple and straightforward. You basically find the main concourse where you find entrance to all the tracks. And around the main concourse there are lots of places where you can wait. Lots of screens with information about departing trains. And at the upper level you find most shops mainly food related shops. Although you also find some at the lower level, obviously. Actually I like it that they separated these two levels, because if you are at the upper level and it's really busy at the ground floor, it's actually quite okay. Here you can just find many places to buy some food and drink and just basically wait in a more relaxed style or even just have dinner or some fast food. You all find it over here. For this trip, I was traveling with the use of Interrail. However, if you want to buy tickets right at the side of the main concourse at the, the ground floor, you also find a ticket counter. This includes staffed ticket counters, but also some vending machines where you can buy train tickets. Although I really have to say that the infrastructure to buy your tickets online is pretty good as well within the UK. My personal favorite website to book train tickets within the UK is Trainline. This is not only for in the UK by the way, but also for many other countries like Spain, Italy, France. Well, I should get a sponsor deal or at least an affiliate link because I'm not getting sponsored by anyone for this. If you are non-British, some rail passes like Brit rail passes can also be very interesting if you want to travel around by train. There are lots of varieties for this, so do some research on this. You can also buy them via the Trainline website. Because we were traveling in first class, we could also enter the first class lounge. And even though I basically didn't took anything here, I just went here to film. This place is rather nice and big and you have a nice selection of drinks, some light snacks, fruit, you name it. I really like this first class lounge. Within the lounge you obviously find information about departing trains and free Wi-Fi is available. About my personal train ticket, I'll get back to that in a bit. At the main concourse you find these big screens, they are basically the same as at the front of the railway station, that do host quite a lot of information about the first upcoming departures. 
and basic information about the later departures. This here, this is my train for today. However, a couple of minutes before my train left, there was another train to Glasgow as well, but that train makes way more stops and obviously needs more time. So if you have a reserved train, just make sure you check what's your departure time, because you might find trains that depart more or less at the same time to the same destination, but have totally different travel times. What I really like about these screens is at the bottom part, you find a busyness indicator. So you know where there might be spots available and where there won't be spots available. Also information about the dining car, what class can be found where, etc. will be given on these displays. At the moment the platform has been given, the displays at the upper part will turn into green. As long as the platform is not given yet, the upper part will be blue. And as you can expect, at the moment the platforms are given, a lot of people move into a certain direction. That was also the case for me. Before we can go to the platform, there is a brief ticket check. And over here you also find screens with information about the de upcoming departure. As you can see, my train today was departing from track number 5. If you're traveling with Interrail or Eurail, like what I did, you are obligated to make a seat reservation for these trains. At least according to the app. But basically no one checked my seat reservation. I made a seat reservation though. At many bigger UK railway stations, you will find ticket gates. However, the tickets were being checked manually over here before I could go to the platform. Although for another departure I had a couple of days before, I also had these gates. Um, yeah, they don't work with Interrail, even though there's a QR code, so the staff has to check your ticket and then open the gate. Basically this was everywhere in the UK, well this doesn't have to be like this, because Eurail and Interrail is also able to open the gates in France and the Netherlands. Anyway, even though this here was not my train I had for today, it's the same train type. So I will show you the exterior of the train first. And these are the Avanti West Coast Pendolino Intercity trains, also known as British Rail Class 390. These trains do have a top speed of 200 km per hour. And because these are tilting trains, they can take curves at higher speeds. According to many British people, this is a high speed train. According to many continental European people, this is a higher speed train. Well, I don't know what it is, but it's a relatively fast train. The top speed is 200 km per hour, and the travel time to Glasgow is about 4.5 hours today. For a distance of 675 km more or less, what is more or less 420 miles. Therefore, our average speed today is somewhere around 150 km per hour or 93 miles per hour. What is really fast and especially for an average speed, because this includes some stops along the way. At the outside you will find screens and these screens will host basic route information like the train number, some stops along the way, the final destination and the carriage number. The first class has been mentioned crystal clear at the side as well with obviously the number 1. The carriages do have letters in the UK. This is different from the continental part of Europe, where this is in general called with numbers. Right next to the entrance doors, it had also been mentioned what seats can be found best in that specific carriage. So it might be better to take the entrance door of that specific carriage at the other side. These trains do consist of 9 or 11 carriages, and they might be combined, so please pay extra attention on the carriage letters if the train is combined because this might be a little bit confusing. The train sets that do consist of 11 carriages do have 607 seats and there's also room for 4 bikes. I hope you like this video so far. If you do so or if it's a helpful video to you, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. If you have some questions, some feedback, let me know in the comment section. Comments and thumbs up really helps to improve this video. And, well, popping up on YouTube and to convince more people about the more sustainable way of transportation because this is where this channel is about traveling on a more sustainable way of transportation mainly focusing on long distance and or cross-bordering traveling 
If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and you'd like to see more trip reports like this, then hit that subscribe button. And you can also find me on the socials. They will pop up on the top right of the screen right now. But for now, let's continue with this video. And speaking of sustainability, let's have a closer look on the environmental impact if you're traveling on this route by train, car and plane. The train and the plane are roughly the same when it comes to travel time, but I think if you count everything together in a more relaxed way, so going relaxed to the station or the airport, the train is the winner. And especially when it comes to the environmental impact, the train is the absolutely winner. And I have to add up to this, compared to the same distance on many parts in the continental part of Europe, the total carbon dioxide is relatively high on the train. But it's still way lower than any kind of other motorized transportation. For now, let's do a train tour. And I'll start off by showing you the standard class, simply because the highest capacity on board of these trains can be found here. And if you're traveling on board of these trains, you'll most likely travel in standard class as well. Codes A. This is where you find four bicycle spots. If you're traveling with a bike on board of these trains, it's obligated to make a reservation. Opposite from the bike area, there is some, well, general area i think that's mainly being used for the train stuff for example for the dining car extra stuff etc coach a is a quiet coach and you only find 46 seats over here because quite a big section of this coach is being used for the bicycle area and well some other general storage that it's a quiet coach has been marked clearly within the train maps and also if you move through the train at the coach numbers or letters i should say then you find coach B. This hosts 62 seats and this is also where you find the accessible area on board of this train. Obviously there's also an accessible toilet but I'll show you this in a bit because it's exactly the same toilet as the accessible toilet in the first class. Then you will find coach C but also only hosts 48 seats. But there's a good reason for this, because in coach C at the very end close to coach D you will find the dining car or dining car, it's more like a kind of cafeteria. I really like this water refill point, but seeing plastic cups right next to it, well that's a bit disappointing though. Despite the not so environmental friendly plastic cups, there are some garbage bins to recycle your waste over here. Right next to the dining car, there's a special area for the train staff. The selection is pretty reasonable and the prices are not too crazy high either. I just really like dining cars and for that reason, if it's on board of a train, I really like to go here and buy something because, well, this adds up something to the entire travel experience by train. Even though it's not super impressive, it's really nice that it's there. If we move on on board of this train to coach D, we get out at a carriage that also has an accessible area and this is basically identical as coach B. Here you find 62 seats and also the wheelchair area. Further on, coats E and F do host the biggest capacity on board of these trains. Both carriages do host 76 seats. I traveled two times on board of these trains by the way. And I used the content I shot during both of these rides. So if you noticed the route information at the screens saying different final destinations on board of this train, yeah, that might be. Because I also traveled between London, Houston and Manchester Piccadilly. The train that I show you in this video is an 11 car train, so that's 11 coaches. However, Avanti West Coast also has trains that do have 9 coaches, although the number of those trains is slightly lower. So the letters of the coaches that I'm mentioning on this video are obviously different if you're traveling on board of a smaller train that only has 9 train cars per unit. If you move through the train, the door towards the first class section is slightly different. Well, this is not first class yet. This is standard premium as you can also see on the headrests, what basically means second class service, first class seats. But I'll get back to that in a bit. First, let's do a sea tour of the second class seats. And for luggage, you find dedicated luggage racks within the train in the open compartments. But obviously, you also have the overhead luggage racks throughout the train. So you don't need to worry about that. I mean, these are long distance trains after all. And even though my personal experience with tilting trains in general is that the overhead luggage racks are not that generous, 
On both of these trains it's relatively okay, at least for a tilting train. Seat numbers are located right next to the seats at the side and above the windows you also find the seat numbers. Above the window you find a small digital display that hosts from where to where a seat has been reserved and also a small light, basically a traffic light, where green means that the seat is available for the entire journey, orange means that the seat has been reserved from a next station and red means basically that the seat is occupied for the entire journey or at least from this point during the journey. For now let's do a seat tour of the standard class seats. A power socket is located right in the seat in front of you, this includes a USB-A socket. I have to say I'm quite a tall boy and even though due to my size it all might look tighter than it really is, it's really good actually. The fold-out table in the seat in front of me is a bit small, at least this is what I thought at first, but I can pull it towards me. This is way bigger and actually these tables are really sturdy. The bay seat, so seats facing each other with a table in between. Those tables are extremely sturdy. And for some of these tables at the aisle seats, the tables can be folded up so it's a bit easier to go in or out. For these tables, you also find the wireless charging possibility and the power sockets including USB-A sockets are located right at the side of these tables. Litter bins are located at the vestibule. Before we move on to the first class, let's take a close look at the toilets on board of these trains and these are the regular toilets. I mean they're pretty fine, nothing special. There was some information saying that you're an absolute hero if you put the non-flushable stuff not in the toilets. To me this is just using common sense. And in a way I'm a bit disappointed to see that we need this kind of stickers. Near the accessible toilets at the vestibules, there are some folding seats and there were three accessible toilets on board these trains. Two in standard class and one in first class. And this is how the accessible toilets are. You can also use them as a baby changing facility. Well for the rest everything was pretty clean during my ride, what I think is most important. And the accessible toilet is obviously way bigger than the regular toilets. Now let's move on to first class. At least what's advertised as first class on the outside of the train and also within the train. However coach I is standard premium. This is basically the first class seats but second class service. What is still a pretty good deal to me and in many European countries this would just be considered as first class. The thing is if you're traveling with DB you get a chocolate. I just left London. Tea, refreshments, you can also choose from coffee or cold drink. There's a hot and a cold drink. I don't like it so far. Honestly, I'm traveling with Interrail. I don't know what's the difference in normal ticket prices compared to standard class or second class. Um, but if you're traveling with Interrail, it's definitely worth the upgrade. You don't pay a lot more for first class. Especially not if I count what I pay per day. It's not that much. Besides that, I'm not paying anything for this myself because I have to do a group tour next week um, in Switzerland and there was a promotion for Interrail, so I got a 50% discount. So the 10 day pass was exactly the same price as a 7 day pass. I'll we'll continue with a voiceover for this. Well, basically, my boss just covered a 10 day promotional pass because it was the same price as a 7 day regular interrail pass. So, therefore, I didn't pay anything for the interrail myself this time. And simply because first class in the UK is, or the long distance trains at least, really something different than what you can find on the continental part of Europe, I really wanted to try this out myself. I mean I'm earning a bit on YouTube for advertisement revenue, but it's really not something that's covering all the costs yet, although we're slowly getting there. Anyway, this here is the accessible area in the first class. The first class consists, at least if you look at the outside of the train, of the carriages I, J and K. However, in the weekends only coach K is first class, and on weekdays as far as I noticed at least, only the coaches J and K. Coach I is standard premium class, what is basically the same as second class, but you find the first class seats. What is still really nice though, because the extra service also comes with a price of course. It has been mentioned on the headrests that this is the standard premium class. What I don't really like about the first class coaches is that most seats do face each other, so base seats. 
There are not a lot of airline style seats and personally I like that most. At the moment I traveled from London to Glasgow I had a seat assigned at Coates K. Seat 11 to be exactly. And this was a owl seat, what I didn't really like and what is not ideal for filming, although it's easier to go out. But I prefer a solo seat, especially if I'm filming a bit. So I just moved somewhere else, but later on I found out that in the weekend only Coates K is hosting the real first class, so with the first class surface. The first class just has a lot of extra surface, and like I already mentioned, the seats are wider, you have more space in general. And even though I don't really like seats facing each other, in general I like this first class. You find basically for all seats in first class, also for the airline style seats, very sturdy tables. Within these tables you can wirelessly charge your mobile devices, there's a British power up socket and also a USB-A socket. The tables for the aisle seats can be put up, what is way easier to get in and out. And as you can see, you can wirelessly charge your mobile devices. Although I really prefer to charge my mobile devices using a cable, simply because wirelessly charging your mobile devices is costing relatively more electricity. Also within the first class there are dedicated luggage racks within the compartments, but you can obviously also use the overhead luggage racks like everywhere in the train. And like I already mentioned, the service in first class is really why I wanted to travel on board of these trains. Just when I left London I got a hot drink and a cold drink, well, I could choose for a big variety actually. And not long after that I got my breakfast, what was really nice. I have to say the vegan selection is quite limited though, but at least for vegetarian selection there's a good selection. At the moment I traveled to Glasgow, I got this sandwich, but also gone before I knew it. I just really liked this first class experience. Not just within the train, but also at the railway station of London Euston at least. Free Wi-Fi is available, although the quality is really depending on the mobile network as well. And since I can use the data just like in the EU, at least at this moment still, I didn't really use the Wi-Fi network on board of the train. In a way it's a bit of pity that the platform numbers will pop up relatively last minute and everybody's rushing to the same train at the same time. So filming in an empty train, I didn't succeed to do that. And even though I'm sure I forgot to mention some things on board of these trains, I think you have a good impression of these trains. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section, I try to answer them as good as possible. The train I took only had a few stops between London and Glasgow, therefore the average speed was really fast on board of this train. Also the train travels pretty fast with 200 km per hour. It's not a super high speed train, but it's definitely a higher speed train. The views from the train at the first section if you leave London are not the most scenic. However. As soon as we get more up north and we approach the north of England and the south of Scotland, around the Lake District more or less, the views are getting actually really nice. So for now just sit back, relax and enjoy the views from the train along this route. Soothing hum 
journeys and where had they gone? Futures whispered on the breeze In the night a calm release Running rails to somewhere new London days in rear view, view. People watching stories told High speed travels, hearts unfold That's it on board of this Avanti West Coast from London to Glasgow. I really like this journey. These trains are comfortable. When it comes to travel time and this is this is also a very good connection actually and the route is really scenic more than i thought at first actually i hope you like this video or this has been helpful to you if so please give me a thumbs up i really appreciate that if you have some questions some feedback let me know in the comment section even if you want to say hello feel free to do so and if you like to see more trip reports about more sustainable ways of transportation, the main focus for this channel is cross-bordering and or long-distance traveling. This is definitely long distance. Then hit that subscribe button if you haven't done this already. You can also find me on the socials that will pop up on the top right of the screen now. Before we really end up with this video, one last thing. Once again, thank you for watching. If you are interested in other videos, of course you can find them on this channel. And something else, in the description of this video on YouTube, you find a link to a map. And on this map, you can find all videos as well. But then on a map. And of course, more lines will be added. See you on the next video.